Straw Hut Media. Thanks for joining us on Both Sides Now and Beyond. Dive into the unseen realms with spiritual mediums James Van Prague and Kelly White as we redefine perspectives on life, death, and human experiences. <laughs> Hi, we made it. <laughs> if people only knew. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, you just can't imagine this one. We you had a little bit of one. sound trouble, just a little, right? A little computer trouble, sound trouble, so I'm on my iPhone. Yeah, well, it, it, you got it, this to work. It that works. was a good it thing. Works. Yeah, it does. How are well, you, Kelly? I'm, <laughs> actually, I'm doing well. It's been quite well. Compared I'm to doing me. quite well. <laughs> oh, God. But you did have an extraordinary Friday evening. I Yes, it was quite extraordinary. The demonstration was really yes. incredible. Um, yeah, I don't say that that easily, but it was really, spirit was there. And I, I knew it was going to be a strong night because during the day, as you know, you get that sense when you spend your mind, open your mind to um, that, that awareness of a space around yeah. you and above you and that you kind of open up to the spirit world and part of opening up, of course, is just being surrendering to whatever there is and being neutral and keeping your energy you know, um, open and in balance and then getting there. And I listened to Leslie Flint tapes the whole day. I bet that was very helpful. Know, yeah, Leslie Flint is the medium, a physical medium with a voice box appears in the air. Uh, when he was alive, and uh, and I sat with him several times, and and the wonderful words. There was a couple that had passed over. Uh, the the woman passed over, a French woman, and she was talking to her Indian man lover, met in India, and it was a true love story. And in the beginning, the guy Mickey comes through and talks about how they are true soulmates. And I listened to that before I did the event, and it was just all about love. And I she and it got to the point where she was saying in the voice box, "Darling, I miss you. I miss you, darling. Oh, please die sooner. Please die sooner. Oh." I know that you can't. It does your life work, but I miss you so much. It was, it was so beautiful. Yeah. And that's true. So the love is what brings them through. You know, love is what it's all about. So that's where I placed my space and kept that in that space. Yes. And all the messages at night were about love and about, there was a lot of upset with people, of course, a lot of emotional, you know, things going on, yeah. but really came down to love and surrendering to that love. And I, you know, you present it to people in your audience and if they take it, they take it. If they don't, that's fine. It's, but I, it was good. Spirit, spirit was working and I was working and many of the audience members were working. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I heard from worked. many people that they loved it. Yeah, it, was it was an incredible fun. night. And you said David G was, was there as well. David G, the, the master meditator who taught Deepak how to, Deepak Chopra how to meditate. He was there and uh, I introduced him and they introduced my meditation course uh, to people there. And he's uh, endorsing my course. Right. And uh, it was great. And we had, lo had lovely singing by his wife and, uh, and Peggy, another musician, incredible talent. And Reverend Christian was there from the, the who runs uh, the center. And it was just an overall, and everyone said, it feels so good in here. It feels so lovely. Oh. And it does, because that's the work they do. They, it's about love in that, in that space. It's my favorite center to go to in the country. And I live wow. here. <laughs> I know. I We're know. Neighbors. Isn't that wonderful? How was wow. your weekend, Kelly? How was your week? I'm so, even traveling. <laughs> my weekend was hilarious. It was so good. James, I had the best weekend. I had the best weekend. It was like um, Don and I went to Chicago so to go shopping, which is honestly, it was like mom, pa, kettle, go to the big town. You know, <laughs> if anybody our age remembers mom, pa, kettle, that's really <laughs> what it's like when you live on a farm. I mean, because it's an adventure. You're going to the big city. So we, I, I mean. <laughs> Did it feel I, weird driving there? Did it feel weird we got into the city because you're in a, a city environment? A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, yeah a little bit because I haven't been out, you know, in a big sure. city in a while. So that, yeah, <laughs> in, the big city. in the big city. But it was so fun, James. I mean, I got to go to all my favorite shops and oh, right. it was just so fun. I had the best time ever. So I, I actually had a great weekend. Super good. Weekend. Yeah, yeah, I had a lovely weekend too. A lot of friends here for the event and, and to visit, and it was yes. very nice. Good. And now I'm getting full force ahead with the starting tomorrow. My my program for my cruise. Okay. It's gonna be quite an interesting cruise. You do know it's coming up soon. Two weeks, because you'll be here in two weeks, right? I'll be there. I will be with you in two weeks. <laughs> two weeks from today. <laughs> that's, that's my guy. That's your. I know that's <laughs> what you're doing. You're like Kelly. How many days is it? Two weeks from today. But I people work really are, well under pressure. So as long as I have you that, do, you do certainly do. I do. I've written books under pressure. That's how it works. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so many people are writing me and emailing me, telling me how excited they're getting for this trip, yeah. and they're, you know, yeah. it's it's a real event and it's really going to happen. And so yeah. this is it's really going to happen. It's really going to happen. And, 
and Margaret, you can't wait for the love boat. I think that's going to be so great. Um, I, I, I called our friend Ron, who's running the trip, and I called him the other night because I was over near his house downtown San Diego, and they thought they'd say hello. And um, it was he, he answers, and he said, "James, it's twelve thirty in the morning in Barcelona. I fly home tomorrow. I can't talk now. Like, oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, you and never I, know where he's like, going to be. Get your phone if you're there. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that's. But he's very excited. Good. Everyone's excited. It's going to be great. And and astrologically, it's a good time. You said to go. It's well, we're gonna. It's a perfect time for us to go on this cruise. Now what's happening now? Because um, I had trouble getting on tonight, and uh, I know you. It's, did. it's been. Is our Mercury retrograde? Well, thing Mercury. Going on? This is gonna sound funny, but Mercury retrograde starts on your birthday. Well, <laughs> I was born during Mercury Mercury retrograde. Yes, you and I both were. That's right. And at sixty five. Huh? Yes, okay. and a lot of aspects in this month in August that I will talk about. You know, throughout the month, because I'll start about today. But what you're experiencing today, I mean, we have first of all, we have five planets retrograde, four planets plus Chiron retrograde. But on top of that, we have a full moon that starts really tonight and tomorrow. And this full moon, you know, you did your show today, James, and you talked about it's been Matt. very intense. It's been a very, very intense. intense. Yeah. So what I I'm literally calling August a month of big emotions. A lot of emotions that are going to happen, a lot of intensity, because we have two full moons this month, which means we have a blue moon, because the first full moon is tomorrow, which really begins tonight and tomorrow, and we'll talk about that, and it's in Capricorn and Vedic Astrology. It's a huge full moon, and the second one is August 30th. So, When's the first one, Kelly? The first one's today and tomorrow I mean, really tomorrow. yes well, today and tomorrow been here in san diego so we won't see it because we have gray may <laughs> oh, oh oh gosh well it's but it's, the energy has certainly been intense the energy is intense and you yeah. said something on your program today on soul care you said um be open to magic do you remember you said yeah. that yeah and yes okay yes. so this full moon in capricorn capricorn is actually it exemplifies manifestation of spirit in matter so be open to the magic because this is a a very magical uh day today and tomorrow really quite magical and listen to this is the kind of full moon where you really want to go inward you want because the intensity of the energy because this is a super moon and it'll appear what does that mean a super moon a super moon is where they appear brighter they're closest to earth and so this is um it will appear brighter here's the other thing james though it brings greater than normal emotional energy, (laughs) right? So it also means that the tides are going to be higher, um, seismic activity, could be storms. I mean, this is... This is a major full moon here coming well, out. Well, Kelly, the other night, the Friday night at my event, it was very emotional. And okay. many people had seen me before said, that's the first event I've been to with you that's been so emotional. And people I, crying left and right. And it was Okay, very, I heard that from other people about that night, about Friday night too. Emotional. Yeah, very yeah. emotional. A lot of reasons why. You know, don't forget, Chiron, the wounded healer, is, in, is uh, retrograde. And it's in Pisces, which brings a lot of emotion to the table and a lot of healing. So I would suspect on Friday you did a lot of healing. A lot of healing, a lot of different types of healing. Physically, Edward Casey came through one point. Oh my like, gosh. Edward Casey came through and talked to a lady about um, her in, internal self. Two people, uh, another lady about her lumbar spine was impinged and it goes down her leg. Yes, she said, exactly right. I mean, it really, some two or three, like in different types of readings, but Edward Casey was there, or his energy was definitely there. Wow. This comes before, but yeah, well, he works with well, you. He works with he you. He does. He works with yeah, you. Yeah, so that's, that's yeah. amazing, though, that you were able to get some information and help for people. I mean, it ran the gamut of emotional, like, you know, partner lost, and you have his break. You have a brace on your arm, and wow. down to your son passed away. He doesn't want you to go over there with him. Um, and the lady said, if if he wasn't going to come through tonight, I've been to many mediums, and tonight if he hadn't come through, I was going to kill myself. Oh my God! So this is what the wow. level of emotion, and it was just wow. like really strong, and I was just like wow. I was just grounded and centered because I don't know they were obviously taking care of me because mm-hmm. I knew I'd be grounded and centered and if I didn't I'd be taken away with the emotion right wow wow I understand that yeah um and it's going to remain this way James right yeah. how long? <laughs> well how, how long, you know Kelly? for a few, what, quite some time days and days and days <laughs> actually it's gonna be this is an emotional month so well it's a good time to let go of relationships to get in relationships well no not a good time necessarily to get into one because venus is still retrograde until september 3rd and in fact speaking of venus 
it does something, it goes into Gadanta, James, your favorite thing. Uh, Gadanta, uh, love Gadanta. Love water, Gadanta, water, water. August 4th to 8th, and, the, and it goes from Leo into Cancer. So Gadanta is always between a fire and a water sign. And during this period of time, August 4th <laughs> to August 8th, hurricanes and, wait for it, extreme transformational quality and destabilizing in some cases. <laughs> so that can trigger financial strain. It can um, trigger relationship issues. So this is, um, and I would say watch your communication with people too during this period, four, August 4th to 8th, because it's it's kind of extreme during this period of time. And it does bring up a lot of emotions. Yeah, so no, now is not a time necessarily to get into a relationship. It's a time where people are leaving relationships actually. Sure. You know, so um, and sometimes Kelly, like to leave a relationship and be with yourself. Yes, like have a relationship, with, but uh, but be finding yourself and have a relationship within yourself. Yes. I think it's a good time for that, isn't it? Excellent, excellent. Again, this is this especially with this full moon. Put your crystals out, clear your crystals, meditate. You said something today too during your show today, and you said that um, the most important thing that you had, James, during your development as a medium was meditation. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent, and a hundred percent with me too. Yeah, There's sitting in the stillness, sitting in that quiet self, mm -hmm. and learning what the stillness is, and yeah. learning that the stillness, the quiet, is very loud, and yeah. it really is so loud. It's going on the inside out. It's like going inwards, yes. and understanding yes. yourself at a soul level, not what you think, but what you feel, what's in your heart. And meditation to me, meditation, or I call it now sitting in the stillness, does that. It, it's an awareness. It's an insight. It's yes. an insightful. Yes. It's insightful work. Oh, it's it's so necessary if you're going to do this work, and it's, it's so necessary, necessary also, Kelly, to ground human, yourself. Yes, as as we're living in this crazy yeah. time right now with all these yeah. planets going crazy. Yes, it's good yes. to know how to ground yourself and center and be still because yes, a lot of crazy energy out there, and we need yeah. to be balanced and balanced. Yes, and yeah, grounded. Absolutely. Joanne Emanuel says, so tired of turbulent times. When are the planets going to line up for happiness? And right. Joy? It feels like a jet plane that's turbulent. It does. Ride. But you know what? When is this plane going to end? Yeah. Oh, exactly. <laughs> well, for, you know, you know what I always say? We signed up for this. But uh, I would say <laughs> yes, go no, inward. I always say that. But go inward and find joy yeah. in, in your life right now. You know, I, exactly I don't really believe that. You know, We always have a choice. You have, we have a bad. choice. Absolutely. And, you know, it is what it is. And that's all that it is. And you know you can't push the river. You got to let yeah, it flow. You, you can't. Yeah, you can't push the river. I don't, I use don't that get one caught up in the current. Don't get caught up in the current. No, no, no. So, well, we have quite a quite a talk tonight, which yes. is so exciting. And Kelly, since I'm on my phone, I can't see the chat room. So, hello everybody. But Kelly, you'll be I in will. The chat. I will. I'll say, I'll say hi to everybody for you. Hi, Misty. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Karen. Hi, Ann Margaret. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Justine. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Ann. A lot of Sue Wells. Hi, Sherry Craft. A lot of people. So Hi, this everybody. explains a lot, Holly says. Yeah, I hope it does. Thank you. Yeah, watch the full moon, you guys. Everybody tonight, you can um, also, you know, do a set your spiritual intentions tonight. Okay. For, it Kelly, was is so it in good. Did you say it was in Cancer? It's in Capricorn. Full so moon which Capricorn. makes it practical, but what it does is it brings like it brings magic to it. It's a, yeah, it's yeah. practical. And get but it get magic. things done. Responsibility in your in, yes. responsibility in your life is what I get. I feel yes. responsibility in your relations in your life, and that means yourself as well. I don't keep on getting that, but into your yourself, have that relationship with yourself. That's very, and that's Capricorn is a taskmaster. It's like let's get it going, let's get it done. Well, I think you're getting that. It's so funny because I have so many clients I'm, I'm right now. No, I, <laughs> thank God, James. Thank God, one of us is. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but. I, it's I get so have so many clients this week that are depressed out of their mind. They don't want to go on. I mean, and it's what you just said. It's stand up, take responsibility, do the work, yeah. go inward, and you know life will get better. It does. I have hope for everything, don't you? I, yeah, I, I totally do. do no I, we're gonna what. get out of this. We're gonna get of out course. of course. You know, and if it's just a, it's a, you know, it's it's a human condition that we've signed up for, like you said, and it's just a condition. It's not who we are. It doesn't define us. No. It's just something, if you can observe it, yes. step back and observe the crazers instead of getting involved in the crazers, it helps a lot. And observation yeah. helps so much. Yeah. And it's a, you know, it's, it, listen, the crazy times are the ones we grow from the most. 
Of course. It really is true. So what you can also go into the film and say, what should I learn from this experience tonight? What am I learning from these crazy times I'm living in? What am I Perfect. learning about my family? What am I learning about my relationship with my family or my partner or friends? Right. I mean, it's been a pr time for me to let go of several people that, uh, you know, in my life. And it's always the movement. Life is about movement, bringing in and oh. bringing out. So. Yes. Now, now saying about the film in Capricorn, um, let's talk about the dream world because that's what we're talking about tonight. And full moons, yes. do, do you believe that full moons bring more of an awareness of dreams? The dreams I do. I do. I do. Me because too. it brings up a lot of emotion and uh, I do. I think it has yeah. a lot to do with uh, dreams. And I'm especially, I love this topic, James, reuniting with loved ones in our dreams. Great love, topic. That was it. you. And I think it's so true. I, it's so accurate. I mean, let's talk about that. Yeah, Where the, do the you number, find? Well, the, the number one way spirits communicate is the dream state. And we had said it in many ways, the dream state, the, the soul leaves the body at night. When you go to sleep, in the dream, you're, as you know, in an ultra state of consciousness, you, your light body leaves this physical body. And many times you're, they're standing around waiting for you to go, come on, let's go. And they, they bring you to the other side. And there is um, a real world, it's a very solid world, very real world, the astral world there. And you have houses and buildings and gardens and schools and academies. You see your guides, you see friends, partners, mm -hmm. family. And oh, it's something we remember these things in the morning Well, our conscious mind will remember parts of perhaps that experience. And if you remember that you've seen a loved one that's passed over, it seems very, very, very real because it was real and it seems more real than it's anything else like, this was real and and it is I, I remember my one of my most incredible experiences um my partner john at the time was uh, with him for a while and he passed over and he used to come out to my house uh, my apartment every summer and we spent the summer together and he used to get up in the morning and make tea herbal tea for us uh for breakfast and in the dream i had a dream where i was back years ago in an old apartment and i was coming down the stairs and there was a dining room and it was exactly set up and there john was making this tea he opened up the cabinet door and there were the tea boxes exactly with the names. I said, well, this is real. This is, I'm here. I'm like, How are you doing this? And he said, oh, I made this for us. Aww. I made this picture for us. So they can do that. They can make these, um, yeah. uh, this, the setting, the atmosphere exactly as it was that you can, in some ways it's more real there than here because mm -hmm. you know, everything starts, this is interesting, Kelly, everything in spirit world, that dimension starts with thought, right? So first place is thought. The last place is physical. So when we think about it, it's first created, all of these, this world, this physical world was first created in the spirit world. So that's where its home is really. And right. it, it resi we reside here, but it's created over there. So when they still have to say, well, there's a house of the mother, it's a mother's house. That might be the true mother's house. This is the, and they say, that's a replica of your mother's house. But to me, I'm thinking that's really the first mother's house. And now here was the replica that was made of. Yes. That. Let's reverse it because that's the space of thought. And this is the physical, but the thought comes to be realized is here. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I'm going to start thinking in those terms. I love I think, that. You know, dream, again, everybody, again, if you surrender, if you go to sleep at night and think, I'd love to speak to my loved one, whenever, but don't bombard them. Because you got to keep it open to the communication and the conditions have to be right that your conscious mind will recall remember these experiences and i always say keep a dream journal next to your bed yes. so you can write down those experiences of, of your loved ones because that will leave you after all it's just like mediumship after we do recalculated readings oh. probably 15 minutes or 20 minutes after, we forget everything i have no idea people right? will say so remember when you said this i said no i, I actually don't <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. Talk, you told me this and it would happen. It happened. I said, oh, I don't remember right. that. So thank you, but I don't remember. Same thing in the dream state. You go to that vibration, that dimension, and you come down to the physical, kind of like you're washed away or your mindset is different now. So Right. So some, what you're saying is that sometimes you may not remember that you Most just of the time had a won't dream. Remember. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Most of the time won't remember. But if you keep a journal, dream journal down, you can talk about your night, your visitations. And you can also go to sleep at night. As you go to sleep, Sending out thoughts about where am I going to go tonight? Is it, what do I want to go visit tonight? Do I want to visit a certain person? Let me go visit my mother. How is my mother doing? And let yourself go to sleep that way. And I'll remember, and just try to say, I'll remember this in the morning, but don't beat yourself up. Just put it out there. But and, and it'll be interesting. See, with the, it can be an experiment. Use it as an experiment and see how it works for you. And there might be uh, some experiments work better than others. Some spirit people might be better at doing it with you than others. So just experiment with it because it happens. I was very surprised. My dad, turned out to be better than my mom with dreams. I was surprised. Isn't that interesting? It, I would have never believed that because my well, dad you know why, didn't believe me. But your dad is more creative. 
he exactly right. My dad was so creative. And he came to me once, James, and I write about this one in the book, which he, he used to call me spooky and he didn't really want to hear anything that I had to say. And he just, you know, I mean, he was whatever, but uh, <laughs> he was, he was Lee. But anyway, what happened is one night I was asleep and you can tell yourself before you go to bed that you want to remember your dreams. Yes. And often what will happen is if I have a dream of a loved one, I'll have to get up to go to the bathroom or I'll have to, my dog will bark or something. And I'll, then I'll kind of remember it. Then it, I remember it. But one night my dad came to me in a dream. I was at my old house where I grew up and I was doing readings and I was doing readings for people. And there was a line to come and see me do these readings. And, and again, I'm in my old house doing readings for people. And all of a sudden I hear knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. <laughs> and I go, What's that? You know, the, the old song, knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Yep. So I opened the door and there was my dad. And dad was a musician. So he was a musician, right? He would right? use that reference. He'd so he would reference. use that reference. He gave mm -hmm. me the biggest hug and then he just smiled and he turned around and he left, <laughs> which was totally him. But I have and to that's tell what you, he had to do though. That's, that's all, all he had to do. Was the, yeah. It was such a, I still remember it like it was just yesterday. And then my mom came to me last night. Now my I'll mother tell doesn't. About that. I have to tell, tell everybody, everybody about this. This is a great one. So I, my mom doesn't come to me that often in dreams. Every is very few and very far between. And yes, you're absolutely right. My dad was way more creative. But last night, well, I went shopping on Saturday, and I just could feel my mom's presence everywhere Kelly I went. Kelly gave herself gifts. Kelly. Let's okay. applaud for Kelly. She finally gave herself the gift to go out and buy some clothes and do some great things okay. for Kelly because Kelly's always giving his people cancer pneumonia, always giving to other people. So yeah, <laughs> so thanks. So Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Pop Mom Pop Kettle, we went out shopping <laughs> uh, and I shopped till I dropped, uh, and it was so Good much fun. <laughs> so I had a dream last night. My mother came to me in this dream, and she looked so radiant and so beautiful, and she was wearing these special shoes. And I looked down and I said, oh, Mom those are the shoes I just bought. And she had this big smile on her face. And those shoes, ironically, those were the exact shoes that I bought. But on top <laughs> of that, my mom had had a pair. My sister reminded me, my mother had a pair of those exact shoes years ago. And anyway, it was just a sweet, sweet. It was so great. I just wanted to hold on to her forever, you know. And that just showed you she's next to you. She's with you. She's impressing you to buy the shoes. The oh, world, no doubt she did. Us. Because yeah, every day they're in our, in our lives right. involved with impressing us. What is the best for us? And they do it in such right. a subtle way. You would never know they're around us, but they're there, everybody. They're there very much so. And the dream state, one thing I want to talk about really quickly is that the personalities of them don't change. The personality right. is very much the same. Um, there's a second cousin of mine who passed away, and I met this lady when I was 14 years old. Met her in Wales, my second cousin by marriage. And she, kindest, lovely, talk about farm, farmhouse country. She was in a small town in South Wales. We're talking about she was born at the town church up the street. And, the, and she met her um, husband or boyfriend, who was my second cousin, at the local pub up the street, which is still there. And I went there when I was 14, 18, 19, whatever it was. And a lovely lady. Just, she likes to take care of the family and stay at home. And that was her place. Her home was at um, Gemini, but it must have had a cancer somewhere. You know, because she was just family, and, and her, her daughter told me, called me up and said she's passed over, and I was really sh shocked and oh, you know, going through it. And then about two nights after that, I had a dream of her, and she was very psychic, extremely psychic. She would say to me things like, "Are you dating a man? What's your boyfriend's name?" I'm like <laughs> eighteen, I'm like, how does she know this? And she was just very psychic, very natural country psychic. And she, um, she came to the stream and we're sitting in her living room area, her sitting room with the small ca um, couch. And it was all her. She said, oh, Jamie, Jamie. And she said, I'm, I'm very upset. And I said, why are you upset? She goes, well, I don't know what to do. I, I really can't be with my family. And they were everything to me. So she was in that mindset that she had to still take care of them. And yes. this was two months after she passed. So I said, it's okay, Joyce. You're going to move on. It's okay. We're always with you. And she goes, I knew you'd hear me and see me. And she said, I've tried to get through to the others, but they won't see me or hear me. Uh, but I knew you would. And she said, thank you very much. I just started telling her, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. It's going to wow. be okay. But it was wow. so real. It was just so real. You can reach out and touch them. So I call those crossovers. That's the term I, I use that. for those. Crossovers. crossovers. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. Uh, Jill Lynch says, my mom came to me in a dream and was literally talking to me. She even hugged me. And it was amazing. There's nothing quite like getting a hug in a dream ah. from a loved one. Nothing it's quite like it. It's that love, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had, I had, I had a, yeah. Go ahead. 
No, Go ahead. I had a partner pass over with John, my son. Right. And I was in the back of a convertible driving the street, and he hugged me. Mm. And I thought, I'm not sure if we're together, like we should be together, but there was this unconditional love for each other. It was great. Yeah. Mm. There's nothing, nothing like that. I have a client, and I, I have to tell you her dream. She wrote, she sent me this the other day. She had a dream in 2019 that she was with her beloved mother who had passed. And she saw her mother and they hugged really tightly and they were, she was so happy. And then she saw her best friend who had passed away. And that also, she, they hugged and hugged and hugged, which is really, that's not uncommon. It's, it, it happens. And she said, and then she said in this dream, she said, she all of a sudden the earth shook and the clouds got stormy and dark. And she said she re, she knew that they were in heaven and that she couldn't be there. She wasn't there to join them. But she also knew that heaven existed and that she, they, that they would be all together. And, and not too far after that, her beloved husband died. And I thought that was what that was about. That was that was the reason that would happen, yeah. of course. To let her know that he was going to be okay, that there was yeah. no death. That there I mean, was there's no, no death. death. Exactly. I mean, really, everyone, there's no death. It's right. like we waste so much time worrying about death. There's no such thing. There's it's no the, such it's thing. really yeah. you know should put your mind on death but on life and how you yes. are how you are in the moments you know yeah yes um, okay here we go Bernadette Desir says how can we know the difference between an actual dream and a past life regression memory or dreams well I I, I would say and I, I've had I've had those you've had those past mm -hmm. life dreams I have. So it's it's almost as if we're, which by the way on the cruise we're going to be doing that we're going to be taken to a past life pavilion or a space where the specialize in that. So to me, my experience, there was very different. My experience been, I was that person. I was in that, the, the, the place, the space, the country, the time. And I was very aware it was me as a soul with a different body. So same soul, different bodies. And I was aware of my, my actions that life, uh, not only in a dream state, but in a regress state. Mm. And, I'm, and you've yeah, you know, I have to. And a dream is very different than that. You know, yeah. you're not you're not as like I guess you'd say you're not as active or you're not involved as much. In a dream, to me, it's more like you're observing it. But in a past life can, re remembrance, you're in it. I you're, guess yeah, that's, I mean. that, that's a good way to say it. And also, sometimes you will have a dream with a loved one who's passed that people will say to me, you know, it, <clears> it's uncomfortable. I, you know, we had a fight in the dream or whatever. And that could be a process dream. So you can be processing your loved ones. Let's say you, they, when they pass, you still had a lot of feelings going, a lot of emotion going on, a lot of problems, perhaps. You'd be processing that or even processing the trauma of their death or processing their death. And then there's difference. That's a different dream than a visitation dream. Visitation dream, they, they bring love and, and um, what what's the right word to use that with James? I mean, just a lot of... A lot of love and a lot of memories and happiness, joy, happiness, joy. But, but, but also what you said, Kelly, is really important in that the trauma, um, because this happened the other day with my events. It was, um, yes. and it always happens when we do readings, that that spirit that passed over might have some trauma left over or a bad memory or they don't feel like they did enough. Or just in a, a, for instance, let's say a father passes over that didn't tell his daughter he loved her enough and he feels guilty on the other side about that. And he wants to get through to her that I love you. Please forgive me. Those types of dreams will happen where you have a visitation with them, and they get the the pos they get the opportunity to tell you that you can recall it. Your conscious mind, how they really, really love you because they know that, and it's a process. And it might be, I mean, I don't know how they do it, but they could show you different scenarios and, and viewpoints of things for you to understand their point of view. And and you know, I just said today to somebody, you have to understand that you're on a level um, that we have. Many of us have unrealistic expectations of others, and we got to be. Um, aware and compassionate enough and have empath empathy for those who doesn't didn't understand that was right. the right way as as kelly has taught me you know everyone people are limited and and your loved ones just because they passed over doesn't mean they know everything or they have manners the personality survives and they make your help to move on your forgiveness yeah. your your sense of i really love you i care for you take the high road you know i talked about this other day about forgiveness um and it's so true forgiveness is a virtue no doubt about it because you're forgiving yourself and you bring yourself some medicine for yourself and yes it also helps the other spirit move on oh if for you... sure it does for sure i've had i had an old boyfriend that came back to me i don't know 10 years ago while i was asleep and he came to me and he said would you please forgive me he treated me pretty badly and i hadn't seen him in 30 years or something and i to be honest i'd forgotten about him completely yeah. <laughs> i had long moved on but he said would you please forgive me and i think james that he had had a life review yeah. or something and then saw his 
yeah. dysfunction while he was alive. Um, and I said to him, of course I forgive you. I mean, I, I'm not going to hold on to that. But but just have the thought. Why would that, I? But, but the awareness, Kelly, of that that's a, a mental world. Yes. And that all the mental thoughts are, are there. And they, they, they said bad things, did bad things. It stays in their head. It's like when on the earth we do something bad or say something bad. So we, we feel, oh, I shouldn't have said it. Oh, I shouldn't I have done it. Oh, imagine when there's no time. And you relive it over and over and over Ugh. again. And that's really what it's about. So you're you're giving them space to grow and yourself space to grow. Opportunities, I say. Opportunity. Yeah. Opportunity. Sir, uh, Sally Farewell says, I've had three visits from my husband after he passed. The last one was shortly after my daughter's wedding, and he stood by the ship that was docked, dressed in his suit with a carnation, smiling at me, and turned and walked away. She said, I knew then that he had walked her down the aisle along with me. 100%. Oh, absolutely. 100%. They always do that. They will never miss an event. They're, they're, they're there. And they will show you by creating that scene to into your mind. They put, by push that into your mind so you know that they were there, that they're part of the experience. Yes. They just don't, you know, they just don't become a figment of your imagination when they pass out of the body. They're more real than we are. They're much more, they're, they're, they only describe they're much more real than we are. This I'm glad you said that. It's us. not a figment because so many people will say, you know, I had a dream with my my husband or I had a dream with my son or I had a dream with somebody and you know uh, I mean it couldn't be real I hear that all the time I think <laughs> real. You, are you, have you lost your mind of course it's real it's uh, I had a lady the other night it was so interesting you know see these reactions of these of, med, of mediumship and one lady is it's so interesting because she was a very interesting lady she kept on her husband came through and she was very um not sure she said, oh boy I said well you know you have his wallet and his his watch in the left the nightstand and there were his wallet's there with the cards. He goes, yes, 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 yes. And then uh, I thought it was very, he was very good communicator. She was a little bit of a problem. But she goes, and, and is there, does he have his nickname? I said, no, I don't do nicknames. But you certainly got the wallet and the credit cards and the watch. Does that mean something? I hope so. You hope so? What does that mean? I hope so. So, but I think that that person has to get look within themselves and resolve yeah. something within themselves. Oh, so yeah. it's very, it, it's, you know, the spirit people, I feel for them because they're always around us trying to get through to us. And we, we put up walls. We put up walls. Come to me this way. Say this to me. Do this. Right. Come, I have to have this. It builds walls up. And we got to oh. be, again, learn to surrender and be still. And don't be so pushy with them. They're they're around you all the time, and they don't never leave so you. Pushy. I, they never leave. They Betty never leave. Stevens says, "My sister used to come to me all the time, but she doesn't come anymore. Could I be blocking it?" I, I was, so I was going to say, "Why don't you see her anymore?" So don't put the emphasis on them. The emphasis is on you. So what have you done that you don't see anymore? Are you more caught up in phonetic energy? Are you not uh, still? Are you not uh, just open? Like what's going on in your life? Because I would put it on you to say that. It's not her coming to you. Are you coming to her? Right, right. Exactly. So I just change that around and make it the opposite. I like that. I like yeah. that how you're doing that tonight. I like that, changing it around. It's I like really that. it's really important to everybody. It's really you've got to give them the space. So, you know, you got to show up. They show up. They're all around us, but do you show up? Exactly. So, oh, Laura says, I'm an only child and my deceased mother visits me often, especially in my dreams. She said, I dream of her so often. We are usually doing just normal things. Yep. Sometimes I think that I'm living in an alternative reality with my mother. What do well, you mean? Well, you are. <laughs> Hello. Right? We are. Yeah. We are a part of many, 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 many levels right now. As I've said before, this, this body, the soul is like 30, 20 percent in here. 80% out here on different levels of awareness and you're living in all these different spaces and places at the same time you have this limited physical experience. So you are living in an alternative uh, space. We all are. And there are many that we're, there are many that we are in that sometimes we're aware of them. Sometimes we get an insightful look at it. Sometimes we don't. But we were, all, we're, we're living in several different worlds at once is all I can say. Absolutely. So this is from Renee Hounsel. Hi, Renee. She Hi, says, Renee. Please, when I experience a dream connection, it's always meeting on the other side. A always. few people, always. Yeah, she said a few people speak that told me it's not. <laughs> she said well, it's the astral plane. Is that based on our energy where we meet? Well, astral well, plane. I, I would say the astral plane. And, you know, we talk about the astral plane, um, many things about the astral plane. Hold on one sec. Kelly, can you continue that? I have a let's get something for the astral plane. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> so, I, so, so, Renee, that's a really great question. Um, I, you know, when I meet with my loved ones, it's in often it is in the astral plane, but there are many different levels. And I've actually um, 
been on higher levels to be with certain loved ones. I've, I've experienced that. So I think that's what James is going to talk about. But uh, I, I have is a whole it, pile. We write this down. Looking for this information. Is that the information about the astral planes, about yes. the different planes? Okay, great. Well, I've been uh, studying it because I'm for the cruise. Oh, that's right. Kind of you paper, have that great. Oh, shoot. it's the great like I don't know where I put it, yeah. but it's a great like map of the other side of the different yeah. levels. And the first is the astral world, where your thoughts become materialized, can be realized. So that is a space. Um, that we go and remember, it's not just one band; it's several bands within a band. So, right, or some spectrum. So you go there, and it becomes realized. Matter becomes realized, and that could be a meeting point of the other dimensions and the physical dimensions, the closest to the physical dimension. So, when I first leave the body, you go there, the astral world, and it'll feel very real. There'll be mountains and lakes and uh, houses and gardens and buildings, and it's very much interesting. It's very interesting because whenever I do a workshop in the physical workshop with people, even on Zoom. And it's a two or three day workshop. They say, well, I had a dream of you last night and you were in class. I said, yes, we continue on the other side. We don't stop here at physicalness. Right. We continue on the other side, learning and understanding. And even if it wasn't just a workshop here, we, we still tend to go over there sometimes and study, go to school, right. prepare for upcoming events in our lives. That happens all the time. I just want to show you what I have down here. What do you have to? Is that Pearl? Hi, Pearly. <laughs> I'm going to see you soon, honey. <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what's going on down here. I love that. So Red Thunder says, what does it mean when family comes to you, but they just smile and they don't speak? That happens to me all the time, Red Thunder. So I, I would just, uh, personally, I, the way I handle that is to let you know, number one, they're around you, that they're right around you to re remember they're with you. And then I would often say, I um, mean, like in the morning, you first wake and you have that sense of that you had the experience. Right away, ask them, what did you want to say to me? What was the message? What was the message? And write it down. I've done that many a time, and they come in that way. They, they don't stop coming to you just because yeah. the dream is over. So that can continue in the waking state. That's where I take the journal and write down exactly because that space is still pretty open, and you don't want to fill it yet with the waking state. So you can easily get information what the message is, and they will have a message for you. They're so, But they don't always clear. just talk. I mean, often they'll just be... Very silent. No, most of the time you don't. They don't talk. Most of the right. time you have to see them, or there's an activity there, or you know, you put you again. It's, it's very active. The astral world. We're very, very busy over there at nighttime. All of us. We see our guides. We see our teachers. We go to schools. We go. We do our mission work. We do all different our soul work, if you will. So there's so many things. It's not boring, and it's not. It's not. Um, no. Stagnant over there. It's busy, busy, busy. It's busy, busy, busy. And that's so, where spirits come in, spirits go out. So it's a, it's a lot so going on. So Tom Casino says, what's the purpose of a near-death experience if there is a purpose? He said, I've had two of them. <clears throat> well, Kelly, what do you think? Well, I think it's to give us, a, to for our soul to remember who we are so that we, you know, we remember that the other side exists, that we're, we're visitors here. Exactly. I, I, exactly right. I think the same thing. If you remember that we're a soul having human experience. Mm -hmm. And also it's interesting because, yeah, I, I think it helps in, in the soul's development. So it's hard to say but for each that soul needs that to realize there is no death, that you are more than just this body. Yeah. And also I think, and from my experience when I had near-death experience, it, and I was wondering why, because I was already believing life after death, but it changed the frequency around me. It, oh, for sure. It, it changed that. the frequency. I was much more sensitive after that. I was much mm -hmm. more aware after that. I was much mm -hmm. more open and more even grew more. So that was, and the messages that came through were on a higher level. So yeah. people would say to me, you know, your, your messages that come through you are a high level of compassion and, and guidance and so forth. And of course, I'm like, well, I don't know. I just, <laughs> whatever happens, happens. But it's right. true. They, they, you can also open yourself up to higher truths. Oh, I love that. So yeah. true. Um, here we go. This is from I might tell you, Let me try one second. I just hear this. That lady's back. Oh, um, the spirit world works with the conditions that you give them. So they can only do the best they can with you. So what conditions are you going to set up for them to speak to you, to see you? You have to set the conditions of the mind, of the space, of the place. And that's your responsibility to do that. And uh, you can't leave it all up to them. So they can only work with what you give them. And that's why, as a medium, it's so important that you do your work on yourself and you ground yourself and you stay in meditation and you, you know, you eat healthily and you sleep and you all these things because it's your vehicle you're using. It's your soul self. So you're right. involving your soul self. It's not, it, the message is one part of mediumship, I feel. Yeah. It's one I, part of too. it. But to me, it's more of your soul expansion and awareness. And that's, that's I often say that the mediumship is a byproduct of the work. 
and 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 it's a yeah. byproduct of sitting in development and sitting in silence and expanding your soul self. That's really part of it. One of the abilities is you become more sensitized to um, messages, to the clairvoyance, right. to sentience, clear audience. Yeah. You become more of the light body. You're using your light body. It makes sense because the more you're able to um, activate that light body and use that. In sitting in the stillness, you become more aware. That's really what it's about, is being more aware because then the choices in your life are easier. You know, how you look at how you look at yourself is much easier. How you look at another person, you know, it becomes life becomes much easier when you have an awareness of yourself as a soul being having human experience. It just is. Absolutely. Uh, Kieran Worth says, Thank you both. I've been very fortunate to have my deceased son, Tony, come to me in dreams. That's great. I never <laughs> doubted the afterlife until he died. Then I was very worried if he was okay and if he was still here. He told me it was like being in a dream for him, which helps. <laughs> so my mother passed over and she said, it's like a dream world. And when I've had that, that I've had the experience of being on the other side and back forth. I've experienced it as a dream world, but in many ways, it's more real than this world. It's not really a dream world. This is key becomes the dream world. That becomes yeah. the real world. And this becomes the dream world. Exactly. And many spirits have said that. And it's interesting when you're losing a sun pass, so it's the hardest, one of the hardest lessons in the physical world. But they're not dead. They're not gone anywhere. But it may be also, I want everyone to know that those who pass over in their soul's destiny, in their soul's time, because every soul has a destiny to fulfill. And it might be they go through the human experience for 10 years, maybe five years, maybe 20 years, maybe 80 years. It all depends on that soul's sign up, their contract. But they often go over, when they pass over, they're helping us here on the physical. So mm -hmm. it's almost like, I often say, you know, we're on a stage and we're the actors on a stage, but then someone passes over, then they become the stage hands. They become <laughs> the stage managers. They're looking out <laughs> from us from the other side and they're making things happen for us. Right. Maybe it's a destiny, a <coughs> an agreement between yourself and the soul that they had to pass over that time in order for something else to happen in your life later on that was called your destiny. And they need to go over there to fulfill your soul's destiny, that they have to help the other side and do something in order for you to go through that. You understand what I mean? Absolutely, right on. That's that what came in. Excellent. <laughs> Listening to every word, and every word is so spot on. It sense, doesn't it? I mean, I've thought yeah. about that before, but I just heard that. Yeah. Uh, Marianne Grabeau says, I had a very strange question for you. She said, I lost my cat, Tippy two weeks ago. I'm sorry. She said, I miss her so much. My strange question is, will I see her again in the next life? And will yes. she try to contact me? She said, I never cried this much over a cat. She got well, to your heart. <clears throat> Absolutely. Of course a, you're going to see her again. Yeah. That, that Kelly said to me today about some a tender heart. And I love that expression, yeah. a tender heart. Tender the animals heart. do that. They make our heart tender and make our heart oh, soft. Yeah. Um, the animals, it's so funny. I was just listening to a tape, Leslie Flint tape, and it talked about animals. And I was reading the book World Beyond by Anthony Borgia, as we talked about this. Yeah. Week. And it's all throughout the animals are real. Animals are here. <sighs> animals are, 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 are all around us. Your animals come in, and they come to get you. They are with you. They, they also help in creation of things you need in your life. They don't forget you. <laughs> they don't forget you. They're right with you. I know Pearl, uh, Pearl, my dog here, was influenced by Maisie who passed over. I know it. I just right. know it. Of course. It, it, it's, the soul's not limited. So it's almost like you can have a part of that and a part of that. And the, the kitty is love never dies. Love continues on. So your kitty's been with you, but you've been so involved in the grief of it and feeling that. I know. I know an animal. It's the oh, worst yeah. thing. I know. Oh, I love it. Oh. I know. It's the hardest thing. Yeah. But when you realize that she's with you because that love is how she comes to you, just close your eyes and start feeling her and ask her to come in and do it and just feel her. And you think, oh, it's my imagination. Great, let it be your imagination. Just open the door and see what happens and feel the kitty in your heart because that's what she is. And I get a sense that she's up on your pillow in your bed. I was going to say making indentation on the bed. <laughs> on the pillow and, the, and, yeah. the ocean and licking you and so grateful for you to give her that experience in the physical world. So grateful. They are so grateful. When my doggy, I put my doggy down, it was the worst ever. Oh. And I said, you know, it's my turn. Please come and get me. And I left the vet. And like 10 minutes later, I'm waiting to a, a nursery. I don't know where to go. She came to me so clearly. And a puffed white, it wasn't her, it didn't look like her physically. It was a, her puffed white self, but it was her essence. And she thanked me so much for letting her be free. Oh. She said, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. She yeah. was busy for a long time, too. You spent she a lot of time busy. with her after yeah. she passed. She was yeah. always around. <clears throat> it's true. Yeah.
Bridget Wolf says a partner of mine passed away in 1995, and then several years later he visited and was asked when I was going to work on his book. I said, when do when I get a sign? And that was the wrong thing to say to a shaman <laughs> because not five minutes later, I saw a flock of crows. That was a sign. I still have not written his book. <laughs> Bridget, better get to it. You better get to <laughs> it. It'll haunt you. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a good sign. Um, let's see. Oh, Kathy Konagneko. She says, I dreamt one time that I visited heaven and everyone there was waving to me and saying that they missed me. And I didn't know any of these people. And when I woke up, I felt so happy that I had seen them. So what I would say about that is you pro you may not consciously in this lifetime have known any of those people, but they may have been loved ones from many lifetimes. Or even possibility. Yeah. Let's think of everything. Yeah. They may be those souls, those beings who are helping to the, make the conditions right and creating that space for your mind that in a later date, you may be able to see loved ones and that they're trying you out. They're trying out that aspect of your mind. They're working with your astral body and traveling and, and seeing if it's effective. And they might be the engineers, these, these strangers, to make that happen. Um, I do feel that the spirit people, our loved ones carry on their work and many, many times they carry on work that they would have loved to have done here, but they weren't able to. My mother was a, my guide right away. And I asked her why. And she said, because I don't feel like I did enough for you in the physical world. So I can help you in the spiritual world. My sister, Lynn, who passed over, came to the day. And she said, so what are you doing with your time with it? She goes, oh, I'm taking courses on, on human awareness. <laughs> Bravo, I'm taking Lynn. courses on <laughs> Good. human awareness. Because I didn't do it here and I needed to be more aware. And she said, it's you. And, I, and I, I think that was, she said, human awareness. I know there was a bigger concept than that, but I knew that she had to put it in like the, um, a, a word that I'd understand. So my Learning grandmother, no, totally. My grandmother, who was a Jehovah Witness back in the day, uh, came to me, I don't know, several years ago. And I, she, we never got along. We never even had a relationship, but she came to me and she showed me all these psychology books and she just nodded and she said, I want you to know. And she was really working on a lot of things up there with the human awareness, you know? Yeah. Um, so, okay, here, here we go. But this Kelly, there's so many people that pass over and they feel this, this, this work they have to do and they feel they can give of themselves freer there than they were able to do here for yeah. whatever the conditions were here in the lifetime. They didn't have the proper conditions that fed their soul. So when they pass to the other side, it feeds their soul. You're free to do what your soul desires to do. And even the beginning, when you want to, and let's say you want to do some creative, like learn how to play the piano or learn artwork, um, you're able to do that. The other night, a man came through, to, it was a wonderful reading, and he said, it was a messenger, and he was apologizing for not being himself to his daughter. He was out of his head, he, alcohol, he mm -hmm. understood that. And he said, but I'm able to do art here. And he said, and I'm gonna show you some art. He gave me a really strong sense. And it was, it was like oil canvas. He showed a big, big room big, big canvas. And he said, not only is it, I paint it, you see it, but you go into the different colored paints, you feel the colors and you feel the different textures and the levels of the color. And it's like, oh. it's a full painting. It's not only one dimensional, it's fullness. You can look at it and you get the essence, the emotion, and you feel it. As you look at that painting, you feel all that emotion within you. Oh. And, that, and I know that's limited to what it's trying to get through, but you feel all that. So that's, they can do that there, you see. Wow. Oh, I love heaven. this. Why it's, it's, called why it's called heaven. Okay. Penny Wade said, I had visitations that came to apologize. My friend Tom apologized and I hugged him bawling. It was intense. It can be intense, Penny. And how wonderful for you guys to have had that experience. And, and in order to have the experience, everybody, just keep an open mind. That's the best. Right. Even in life, you got to keep an open mind. Oh, gosh. In order, to fill it with in order to fill it with truth. You have to keep an open mind. You'll discover truth the more that your mind is open. If your mind right. is closed, it won't, you, won't be, you won't get receive anything. So true. Vicki McManus Gonzalez, she said, my husband's come to me in almost every dream, and it's been so real. She said, but recently, wait for it, I started a relationship, and suddenly he no longer comes to me in my dreams. Well, <laughs> Taken he doesn't care want, of. I mean, you're taken care of, exactly. And he doesn't but, need to yeah. anymore. The other night, uh, in, the, in the message that came the other night, and I'm sure um, the sister's here, Candace is here, um, this gentleman who's lost his fiance. And in the middle of the reading, she said, and this happens quite a bit, and Kelly, I know you've done this as well. They would often say, um, and I had to say it very gingerly. I said, um, would you be open to receiving more a loving relationship, another loving relationship? Uh -huh. And the guy, Dean, goes, you betcha, yeah. yeah. Because his wife was trying to is going to find the best person to match with him, and yeah. many many times, more times out of not, they they do that. The spirit person, your loved one, your partner that you're with, let's say, um, they will try to find you a mate, 
that is perfect for your yeah. self and the connection. So they do do that. So yeah. they do do that. They look at, they love you. They want the best for you always. Absolutely. Bonnie Bond says, can people feel guilt on the other side? I, I think they can feel guilt. They feel they feel oh, like yeah. they can accomplish this. They and sometimes you can go for that mindset. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Mm -hmm. I shoulda done that. Oh, if only I knew then. I wrote the book Unfinished Business years ago because I got so tired of hearing the spirit people say, "If only I knew then what I know now, I would have made a different choice." And it's love or fear, and 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 that's it. So we have to live every moment to the fullest, and and live in love. The past has already happened. The the future is yet to be. So live from this moment now. Right. Oh my gosh. Um, Cindy Bruno Johnson. So what's the best way to have a visitation dream? I badly want to have a visit from my husband who passed away two years and seven months ago. I, did we say that? Yeah, we, we said that at the beginning. That. I mean, you know, I just about that, so. stay open, Cindy. Um, stay open. And I'm sure he's been there many times. You probably just don't recall it. Be still. Ask, mm -hmm. ask him to come through when he's able to, but don't be forceful. Remember, it's the conditions that you set up. We can't be demanding. We're just going to be do the work for ourselves. Open up that space. Keep a journal next to your bed for sure, and we'll see what happens, how they communicate. You know, just because they've also passed over doesn't mean they know the correct way or the way, the process of coming and communing with you in a dream state that you will consciously remember. You remember when you're in that astral world, but you know, getting it to remember in the conscious state is a little different. So I'm sure there's some factors involved with that and so difficulties, true. of course. You so know, true. Spirit, person, spirit people have said to me, you human beings, you human species are so difficult because you change your mind left and right and you don't stay true to who you are and you go off in this tangent and that. How can we work with that? They say, how can they, how <laughs> how can we, they work how with that? How do you expect us to work with that? They say, can you imagine they're just sitting there like, really? We're sitting right there. <laughs> what is your problem? So this is a good one. This is from Debbie um, LaSalle. She said, my grandmother knew when someone was going to pass by her dreams. Yep. Always the same dream. Dream, sheet into a room with a long table where everyone seated was deceased. I have had this dreams many times. There was one seat open, and when she went to sit, she was told, No, it's not for you. The next day, she'd find out somebody who had passed. When she passed away, she visited me. I've had that experience, Deb. Have you, I Kelly? Know. Oh, more than one occasion. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Where well, that's I a good one. That's a great one. I think. It's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's something. And it, now I take it pretty well when I when I was younger and it used to happen it made me you know was <clears throat> I, I'm very attuned to people that when I um in the audience or when I'm reading them whatever um I'm very attuned to when someone's not taking care of themselves I'm very aware that the life force is falling down and it usually comes from fear and self-imposed worries and yeah. living in total fear and and they become remember fear restricts it limits and you have this energy this prana coming through you your fears your worries block it it blocks that so you really should i think every day ask yourself am i open today if i am not what am i blocking and then look at it why am i blocking this you know why can i hear why can i see spirit when i sleep at night what is holding me back from the dream state to have visitations and i think you should ask yourself that because you know we can give you general answers and, and wonderful answers and resolution but you yourself each soul is so different and how your mind works is so different so i think it's good for you to yourself to go to self-discovery and, and uh, do it every day assess yourself right a absolutely absolutely and um okay yeah well it's the same question lemonel says what does it mean when a deceased family member tries to speak <clears throat> In a dream, but the words are mute. That happens a lot. I mean, happens a lot. Yeah. I mean, just just the, the manipulate your, the dream state with you, and that you're able to remember it in the conscious state is a miracle. But the words on top of that that's that's a hard one. That's a hard yeah. one. So I, I don't find I get words from anyone really that much. I do. I get more thoughts. I get more thoughts too. Yeah. Yeah, like my second cousin, I got thoughts, mm -hmm. and and they don't you know they don't use words on the other side. It's all telepathy. It's exactly. all telepathically. So. The instrument is, um, you know, it's a telepathic connection. It's not a physical connection per se. So we got to be open to those different ways and aspects of, of that world and how they communicate. Absolutely. So James, tell us what's going on here. So I know that you've got. I'm crazy, Kelly. I know. I know no, I'm going crazy. <laughs> okay, the meditation course. <laughs> My meditation course is, is fantastic. It, I have till Thursday the second. It goes up in price. So it's silly um, savings right now. Of, I think it's forty dollars. Oh, that's so, great. Um, yeah, so it's uh, August second. Uh, it goes up to the regular price of three more days, two more days, three more days, and then it goes regular price and becomes an evergreen course. 
Um, and then I have, um, let's see what's going on. I have the cruise that we're going to be doing. And I have this Thursday, I'm going to do a, a soul care intensive. And the, the school, the regular, I'm setting up, a, right now I'm setting up what's called a bundle. We have three very, I'm, I'm doing a transformational work. So if I don't do workshops, I, I use my courses to set up a certain mindset. So the next one I'm getting into is transformation. And Ooh. it's going to be the 28 days of transformation, uh, right. some days of energy cleanse. There's all those ones that transform people because I think yeah. it's, it's needed. So I'm working on that right now. It, oh, gosh, James, that'd be so good for this next several months coming up. I mean, really good for that. Wow. Mm -hmm. And everybody, I want to remind everybody, set your spiritual intentions today because this full moon is really about creating <clears throat> magic and setting the goals for your life <clears throat> what you will spiritually think of it like that. And if tonight you want to start, you know, seeing your loved ones in dreams, set that intention and then Kelly, let it go. I'm interrupt you by saying I have to throw mine. Excuse me. Um, no, please. You said, maybe, sir, you set. And I think she's going to say, set your time, your clock's back. And I want to say, yeah, think of it like that, setting your clock. Oh. So set your clock for intentions. So set your intentions okay. like you set a clock back or forth. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So and, and put your crystals out and take a wonderful bath and put your water. If you want to make uh, moon water tonight, tomorrow is a good time to do that. So right. it's quite a, quite a powerful time, everybody. So and then you'll and see me Thursday. And electronics yes. will be coming up. And Thursday, I'll be doing all of month of August, astrology for all of August. So. Oh, good. Well, oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, everybody, we will see you next week. Have a great week. Have a great week, everybody. All and right. uh, we're traveling through a lot of delays in airplanes. So just realize that. Just realize <laughs> There you go. <laughs> all right. Take Thanks, Renee. Days. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Go. Thanks for joining us today on Both Sides Now and Beyond. Your hosts, James Van Prague and Kelly White, are dedicated to bridging the earthly therapeutic world and the world beyond, aiming to guide you on a path of self-discovery and spiritual enlightenment. Every Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, you can tune in live on YouTube and Facebook, or if you miss the live show, you can always find the latest episodes right here on your favorite podcast app. Remember, this journey of exploration and understanding continues weekly and we're honored to be part of it with you. We encourage you to subscribe to our podcast if you haven't done so already, ensuring you never miss an episode of our foray into the unseen realms of the many lessons they hold for us. Until next time, stay open-minded, remain curious, and remember, life and its myriad experiences extend beyond the physical plane. See you next time on Both Sides Now and Beyond.